Welcome to this episode of Big Why Local Love, where Big Why is living well, eating smart team of registered dietitians. I'm Carrie. I'm Andrea. And I'm Steve, the beer buyer for Big Why and Table and Vines Liquor Division. Today we're in East Hampton, Massachusetts, visiting Fort Hill Brewery. I've been here several times, and they're a great local partner. Would you like to go meet Eric? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Cheers. Cheers. Glad to be here. That's really good. Oh, there's Eric. Hi. Andrea, hey, Gary, glad you could bring Hi. Steve along. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We'd be lost without him. Yeah, so thank you for having us here today. We're glad to have you. So Steve said we've partnered with you for many years now. Uh -huh. How did you get started doing this? Well, it's been five years now, yes, and truthfully, the reason why we chose East Hampton is because of our water source, the Barnes Aquifer. We won the tastiest water in 2015. Jimmy Kimball did a little live skit on TV oh, late really? night. That's cool. And uh, being that it's 99% of beer, uh, that's sort of why we're here. Awesome. And there's nothing like having fresh local beer, too. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right at the foothill of Mount Tom, so right near Holyoke and in East Hampton. Absolutely. We've got uh, we've got a beautiful sort of farm setting, uh, the backside of Mount Tom, mountain biking, some skiing when. Uh, when the weather conditions are appropriate, but uh, we love to be here. I've been here several times, and there's, there's never a time that you can come in and not run into someone you know. Oh, really? And the best part about visiting this is it's dog friendly. Yeah, so oh. we saw two dogs, so tell us a little story about them. Uh, those are my two dogs, Odell and Luna Tuna. They're <laughs> actually the mascots of our beer branch manager. Mm -hmm. um, we are a dog friendly place. On any given weekend, I think about maybe 50 to 100 dogs pass through our doors. Nice. Um, we do have a great charity event, Barks and Brews. That's sort of our anniversary party. And uh, we support the Bacon Humane Society and dogs are, uh, they're always running around. So that's an important yeah. part of our lives. That's really cool. I visited one of those Barks and Brews, the first, the first event, and it was amazing to see how many people were here. It was yeah. overwhelming. That's awesome. So are we gonna get to help you brew some beer today? I don't see why not. We got a couple batches of fresh bit going on right now. We got some canning. Nice. Uh, and we should, uh, should probably check it out. All right. All right. Finish we'll up these should and we get going. These first. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Hey guys, come on for a tour. All right, thank you. Wow. You mind your step? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty significant there. Rachel, how are our brews coming along? <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. So here we got Rachel brewing a double batch of fresh pick. That's gonna be about a thousand gallons by the end of the day. Uh, this is the beginning of the process. And uh, over the course of the day, we're going to move our way uh, down the line. So right now we're dealing with the grain. We've got our malt mill over here. And then uh, we'll cool it down, add the yeast, and then throughout the fermentation process, add hops for our IPAs, of course. Wow. wow. Interesting. And you built all of this from scratch? Yeah, this building is about five years old. Me and my cousin, uh, we sort of had the opportunity to build a, a brewery from the ground up. Uh, even the floors are sloped towards the drain so we can keep everything clean. And uh, so far it's been working pretty well. Right now we're in the mash steeping the grains at about 120 degrees. Uh, why don't you come on up and I'll show you how it's done. Here we got our mash done. We're, uh, we just started our second batch. You can come check out, uh, Steve, if you would hold this for me, please. Watch your face, it's very hot. Oh, wow. But here we got our greens. Uh, typically, we'll, uh, we're making sure that we're just making a porridge yep. of uh, grain. We're extracting all the sugar from it. And then the next tank, we're gonna separate the, uh, the grains from the sugars and ultimately add the hops in the kettle. So do the grains change based on what beer you're making? Absolutely, not only for color, 
but we'll, for taste, of course, but we also use different temperatures inside the mash uh, for our lagers as opposed to our ales. Um, we've got a very sophisticated system, so we're not only able to change the grain bill, but also the temperatures in the mash done have a huge impact on the, uh, on the end result. That's amazing. So how much beer would this turn into? So this is going to be 1,500 gallons worth of, uh, of beer in the end. Typically inside our fermentation tanks we'll quadruple them, but, and that would be 6,000 gallons worth of beer, probably more beer than you can drink in a lifetime. <laughs> I'm Maybe trying. Not, okay. <laughs> some, some will try. <laughs> so Eric, what's going on in this section? So these are our fermentation tanks. And actually, we just had these modified so that we can create more fresh pick and jigsaw jazz. Uh, each tank, we probably spent about $11,000 in terms of tank modification so that we can recirculate the hops, carbonate them, uh, and produce more fresh beer as quickly as possible. So um, basically you're doing more in one tank than you were before? Absolutely. Uh, other breweries throughout the country uh, use several different tanks in their fermentation cellar. We're able to do the majority of work inside one tank uh, to keep everything sterile, uh, oxygen free, and ultimately delicious. Wow, that's There's really good. There's a lot good. more science and chemistry in this than I had ever imagined. So we're in the back corner of our packaging area. You can see that we've got a thousand empty kegs waiting to be filled. We've got our canning line to the left, kegging line to the right, uh, ready to package uh, 3,000 gallons of fresh beer. So what kinds of beers do you brew? So we brew lagers and ales. We started out as a lager house, but uh, we've got a few fan favorites, our fresh pick and our jigsaw jazz. So ales have been becoming a consistent uh, following in our in our repertoire. And, and beer is a perishable item, so freshness certainly matters. We've designed this entire facility in order to accommodate freshness. Once we've finished canning the product at 32 degrees, it goes right off into our cooler, which is 34 degrees. We've got our trucks that are refrigerated, uh, goes straight to coolers. We really don't have our beer uh, in, an, in an open, uncontrolled space. Um, because beer is very much like bread and uh, it's got to be fresh. And that's why our customers love it so much. We try our best. So can we get a hand on uh, packing over there? Absolutely. Why don't you come this okay. way? Why don't we grab a beer off the line and uh, go to the tasting room? Sounds good. Got yours? Cheers. <laughs> What has your experience been working with Steve and having your brand in Table and Vine and Big Y? Well, we're very thankful that Big Y shares the same vision that we have. Every Monday morning, 9 o'clock, First Truck's always going out to one of their stores. They're always helping us position our new beers, our, our seasonal offerings that we have, and we're very thankful that um, they understand the, small, the, the issues that a small business uh, faces. And I think everyone understands that Big Y and Table and Vine, it, it's so important to support, support local vendor. Right. Um, those partners are, are what has built our reputation and, and certainly working together has made not only great partnerships but great friendships as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode of Big Y Local Love, be sure to follow our other adventures on bigy.com slash local love and follow Big Y and Living While Eating Smart on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Cheers. <laughs>